Hey, welcome to the shop. So when you're MIG welding and you have the choice of different wire sizes, which is gonna put down more material in less time, the smaller one or the bigger one? See, I just released a video last Saturday going over MIG welding wire diameters, and I demonstrated the typical textbook practices. That's what I've followed, that's what I've seen done, um, but there's a wide range for each wire. For example, I welded quarter inch thick with 030, 035, and 045 wire all on short circuit MIG, and they all performed pretty well. Also, I welded half inch thick plate on short circuit MIG with 035 and 045 using a higher amperage machine, and they both performed well also. So there's clearly a wide range that you can use. And I had a couple comments on that video pointing out that when you have the option, sometimes a smaller wire can actually give you a higher deposition rate, and it can also help penetrate deeper. And I thought, oh, that's pretty interesting. And Peter Zila, who also has a good library of YouTube uh, welding content on there, uh, chimed in. He's like, you know, I've seen that too, especially on machines that are limited on amperage. So we're gonna test that out today, and I'm excited to see what happens. Now I'm gonna test this out with some quarter inch thick mild steel. I wanna keep everything below 200 amps, and uh, this is going to be kind of the top end of the material thickness that I'd recommend welding on the regular at least with a 200 amp class machine. I'm removing any mill scale just to eliminate that as a variable. Whether you need to or not depends a little bit on what you're doing, but it's a good just uh, general practice. So the machine I'm running is the HTP Pro Pulse 220. It's a 200 amp class machine. I'm running some 030 ER70 S-6, just regular MIG wire. And I did some work with the settings. I'm running manual settings. I like driving a manual, I often like welding manual. And 618 inches per minute, I mean, that's screaming, but that gave me around 200 amps and 24 and a half volts. Gave me a pretty good result. So that's gonna be our baseline with 030 wire. Now I'm just using a straight push angle. I'm not doing any sort of manipulation or loop-de-loops or any of that kind of jazz. I'm just going about 10 to 15 degrees as a push and about 45 degrees into the joint and trying to stay up as close as I can to the leading edge of the puddle there. The arc is pretty smooth. I have some frying bacon sound here and a bit of spatter coming off. Whenever you are running this much amperage through a wire this size, you're gonna get a little bit. I didn't use any kind of anti-spatter or anything like that, so we can take a look at the amount that we got at the end. But overall, it's running really smooth, and I think uh, it's you know pretty promising. Somewhere around 180 to 190 amps for the majority of the run um, is what I was seeing. I gotta say, that is a pretty nice bead if you ask me. So um, baseline here with 030 on the surface looks real good. Now there is some uh, bigger spatter here on the bottom and uh, perhaps that could be adjusted out with a little bit less voltage maybe. But uh, I think the short circuit arc actually ran pretty good so I'm not sure I'd wanna do that and run any lower voltage. But this bigger spatter um, from my experience usually just chips off pretty easy. Okay, most of it scraped off and I didn't use any kind of anti-spatter or anything that might help too. Um, but uh, yeah, I think pretty good baseline. All right, I'm gonna change this out for 035 wire. I used to just clip it off and pull it out the end, but it doesn't really take much longer to clip the end and rewind it back on here for next time I load this size up. Reminds me of uh, my parents taking me to the video store when I was a kid and the sticker, be kind, please rewind. I wonder what happened to all those old videos, VHS tapes. This is one of the only machines I know of this size that'll actually take a big 12 inch roll of wire. All right, I did a couple of tests here offline. 420 inches per minute and 23 volts is giving me a very similar amperage and overall uh, result as far as appearance goes. So we're gonna go with that for the 035 wire. All right, so here's the first weld. This is cooled down to room temperature. So I'm just gonna run the other one on the back side so we can slice it through and take a look at them. I want this to be an apples to apples comparison. So I'm keeping as similar a technique as I can. I'm shooting for the same size fillet weld. I'm using that same 10 to 15 degree push angle going in at 45 degrees, just riding as close as I can to the leading edge of the puddle. Now I'll apologize on behalf of my camera's autofocus, the uh, short arc, something about the way it was arranged was not uh, happy, but you can see I'm still sitting around 180 to 190 amps, very similar, and the arc is pretty similar also to the last weld. 
So I think we have a pretty close apples to apples comparison and I'm excited to see the results that we get out of these and how they compare. Okay, here's that 035 uh, fillet weld there. Once again, pretty nice result. This is the 030, so it's fairly similar. Um, as far as spatter goes, I'd say it's pretty similar as well. Uh, no really appreciable difference. Now if we look at the fillet weld size, this right here is 316, so it's shooting to have something around the same. And it's just a bit over uh, 3 sixteenths here, but not quite to a quarter when I checked with that gauge. So that's what we have. Spin it around here. Should wait for these to cool so I don't have to juggle them so much. But anyway, 3 sixteenths right there, um, all the way along. So these size similar, uh, we ran a similar amperage and I think a pretty close apples to apples comparison. I took a cross section just to make sure that I had fusion down to the root, that bottom corner of the joint. And both of them did. I'd always like more penetration on a uh, short circuit MIG as you get into thicker plate. But this is pretty typical of that. And I'd say between the two sides, there's not a huge difference. So the question that we set out to answer is whether you can put down more weld in less time by using a smaller wire, as was brought up in the comments. And what I'm seeing is that you can in an apples to apples test where you're running basically the same amperage, same size uh, weld. Um, and those sorts of things. Now, the uh, weld time was 26 seconds for the six inch weld on uh, 030 versus 31 seconds on 0.035. And that's about a 20% time savings. Now, what's the takeaway from all this? Well, we ran a pretty similar apples to apples test, about 180 to 185 amps in both cases, had a similar size and a similar weld beam profile. The penetration wasn't night and day difference. If anything, the 030 was a little bit better. And that makes sense because you'd have a higher current density or the same amount of amps through a smaller area is gonna give you an arc that punches in more. That's why flux core actually digs in a little bit better, but it wasn't night and day difference. Well, should you always run the smallest diameter wire that you can? Where is the cutoff? What are the limits? Well, the real limitation here is wire feed speed. See, in this case, I was able to feed over 600 inches per minute on the machine that I was running. Not every machine is going to be able to do that, but I had to feed wire that fast to hit that 180 amps because wire feed speed and amperage go up and down together. Now, if I had a different machine that could really only feed about 450 inches per minute, then I wouldn't have been able to hit that amperage and my deposition rate would have been slower and the 035 would have won out across the board. So you have to consider how fast you can actually feed wire. Now, if I wasn't limited on amperage and I went up to a bigger uh, amperage machine, then that 035 could actually overrun it just by pushing more amps there. So what am I gonna do about all this? Well, I'm pretty convinced that it just makes sense in this ProPulse 220 I was running today to just leave 030 wire in there across the board. There's no reason to jump up to that 035 because I can get close enough to the max amperage on the machine just by turning up my wire feed speed on that 030. Now on the big MIG, I'm gonna stick with a uh, larger 035 wire and probably just leave that in there across the board because that's gonna let me run clear up. I mean, I welded some half inch thick and got a decent result uh, in the last video. And while I liked the 045 a little bit better on it, I don't know that it was enough better to be worth the hassle of a wire change. So I think that the general textbook ranges that I recommended in the last video really apply, but maybe when you have the option, the smaller wire can actually be beneficial. Let me know in the comments what you think, what your experience has been, and let's keep this conversation going. And uh, if you enjoyed this or learned something, let me know by hitting that thumbs up below. We'll see you next time.